Do you want to capture some cinematic riding footage like this? Or maybe you do a lot of high intensity action riding like this. Drag aboard. Gotta lay her down, baby. Maybe moto vlogging is your thing and you want to talk to your audience while riding the bike like this. All right, guys, we're going to show you one more time here. We're going to do three stops. Or maybe you want to get deep into the cinematography and get some epic angles like you see here. We've all got different reasons for wanting to capture footage of our rides. Maybe you want to make a YouTube channel just like this one, or maybe you just want to create some memories and store them forever. Or maybe you want your GoPro to ruin your shot. Stupid GoPro. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you the gear that I use to film all of my ride along videos that you've seen on this channel. The camera, the accessories, how I mount it, where I mount it, and a whole lot more. Let's jump right into it. What camera am I using? I use this guy right here. This is the GoPro Hero 10 Black. You can see it's got a front facing screen on it, which I love, and it's got the rear screen. So. Before I get into this and all the rest of the things to come, let me just say, I will have a link to everything I talk about today in the description of this video. And if, like some of you have asked, you want to help support the channel, the best way to do that is just to use the links I've got down below. If you use those links, it helps my channel and it helps me continue to make these videos for you. So let's get into it. Like I said, Hero 10 Black, that is the camera I use. There are two versions of this. They have an 11 now and a 12. I don't recommend that you get either of those. And the reason is this little guy is only 250 bucks. You can pick this thing up on Amazon today with Amazon Prime shipping and it'll be at your door in two days. That is pretty cool. And like I said, this little thing has been bomb proof for me. One thing you will notice about this camera is it's sitting in this larger case with this big foam thing on here. Let me pop this off for you. This is what it looks like without the foam. This little foam thing just goes over your microphone and keeps the wind noise out. If you have watched any of my videos where I'm riding the bike and talking to you at the same time, I do all of that just through the rear camera on this. I don't even use a lavalier mic stuffed into my helmet like you'll see a lot of the other moto vlog style channels do. I have found that this rear microphone picks me up pretty well and that I don't have anything else to plug in. I just slap the GoPro on my helmet and I'm good to go start filming. This case comes off of this pretty easily. There's a little tab over here that you pull down on. This is actually really not intuitive, but uh, you pull down on that tab and then that lets you swing the door out like this. Once you've got the door swung out, you pull the two apart. This is the actual GoPro itself. It's a much smaller footprint. On the top of it here, this is your record button. So as you're riding, you just poke this button on the top. On the side here, you've got your battery. I'll take that out in a minute. On the other side right here, this is your power button. You press and hold to turn it on, press and hold to turn it off. And then down here on the bottom, you've got these little feet. These little feet just sort of flip down off the bottom of the camera and then a screw goes through them and attaches it to whatever you're mounting it to. More on that later, I'll show you how I actually put it onto my helmet. And the good news for anybody out here who doesn't want to ruin their helmet, my helmet mounting system does not stick permanently on your helmet. I love that. I like being able to totally detach it and have my helmet look just like it looked when I bought it. Like I said a moment ago, you can pick this little guy up for only 250 bucks. This media mod, which goes around it, is 80 bucks. Now, if you buy them together from GoPro's website, you can save a little bit of money by getting a subscription. At the time I bought it, it made sense. I bought it from the GoPro website because the deal was much better if you bought them together. Nowadays, it really doesn't matter whether you get it on Amazon or you get it on the GoPro site. So you can pick this guy up. I highly recommend picking up this media mod. I know it drains the battery a little bit faster, but it is just such a convenient way to record. No wires, no plugging stuff in, talk right into the back of it, and you're good to go. 
when you're done or you get where you're going, you pop the camera off, you stick it in your pocket. You don't have to plug this out of here and into there and feed a bunch of cord up out of it. I love the simplicity of it. So for me, the GoPro is the way, the Media Mod is the way to do the audio. Now let's talk about some of the accessories that you're gonna wanna have in order to start recording your rides. First up, and the most important, this little guy right here is the GoPro battery. I promise you, no matter what you do, no matter how long you intend to record, one battery is not enough. You must, must, must buy at least an extra two batteries. I bought my batteries from the GoPro website. They now sell these. You can see this is the battery that came with the camera, and this white battery is the one I bought. These are supposedly longer lasting. They call them their Enduro batteries. I'm not necessarily sure they last any longer, but these are the ones they sell, so I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure this is the only one you can get now. This is what the charger looks like when you buy the batteries from GoPro. They come with this little charger. It is, I have to say, a little annoying that this battery charger doesn't come with the GoPro. It comes with the, the extra batteries. So you almost have to buy it. I know, it seems like they're nickel and diming, and they kind of are. So you can get third-party chargers and third-party batteries. They are much, much less expensive than the GoPro ones. I think I bought this two-pack of these batteries and this charger for like 35 bucks. Um, and I might've got that on sale. So it's up to you. People say that the third party batteries will overheat your camera, it could cause problems, that they get a little glitchy. Uh, I can't say for sure, cause I've never used them. So I got two of these white batteries, one of the blue batteries. And for me, for all the rides I do, I typically only use one battery and then maybe a half of a second one, so your mileage may vary. Another thing you will get when you order your GoPro is this little soft sort of semi, it's like a hot, soft slash hard shell case. This thing zips open and just gives you room to hold a bunch of accessories. I'll uh, roll in a top down shot here of some of the stuff I carry in here. There's all sorts of accessories for GoPros, lights, uh, different microphones, these all different sort of mounting accessories like this, adhesive types. I'm gonna be honest with you. If you can't tell by this channel, I like to keep things simple. So really, I don't get deep into the accessories and the mounts. I've got one setup that goes on my helmet. I'll show you that in a second. I've got some extra batteries. I've got that media mod case, and that's all I use. All right, enough beating around the bush. Let me show you the helmet. This right here is the helmet I use. I don't think I have ever shown this helmet on the channel. Uh, this helmet is made by GDM. Let me go ahead and roll this into the camera frame for you. This is like a, uh, a motocross style helmet. Got a nice brown liner in there. I'll throw the link in the description to this as well. This is supposedly a DOT helmet. I, I am not super certain if you can see the flex in there. I'm not super certain that this is actually DOT. If it is, that's great. Uh, I hope it saves me. But in the end, I bought this helmet because I really don't like full face helmets at all. If I did not start this YouTube channel and have a need to film my rides, I probably would never wear a full face helmet. But I picked this one up because it's got great airflow. And the look at the, the peripheral vision on this helmet here. Most helmets, like I have a, a Biltwell Gringo, it's like it comes all the way out to here. It just doesn't let me see very much. This helmet is super lightweight and it just has a wider cutout here in the front. But as far as how I mount the GoPro, you can take a look at this thing right here. I'll go ahead and roll a top down shot in here because it's a little tough to see with everything being black on black. But basically the way this thing works is it just clips. It's got a rubberized spongy material on the inside. You've got two little buckles that come up each side of the helmet here, and it just secures this piece. You can see I'm moving this, wiggling it back and forth. It's not going anywhere. This thing stays super tight and secure to the helmet, and the best part is whenever you wanna take it off, if you're not filming, you're just going for a regular ride, it is super easy. You just boop, boop, two little presses on the inside. This whole piece pops right off your helmet, and it's like it was never there. I love it. 
And even better than that, this mount right here was only like 30 bucks. I will put the link again below. Please use the links in the description if you wanna help the channel. This little guy was only 30 bucks. And let me show you now how the GoPro goes on. All right guys, so this is my favorite part right here. It's so easy to mount this thing on the helmet. These two little feet down here at the bottom of the GoPro are going to slide into these little feet on the helmet mount. So let me see if I can get this whole process on camera for you. We're gonna take the GoPro right here, slide the two feet down into the mount, and then we're gonna take this screw, which comes with the GoPro, pop that right in there, spin that on till it's tight, and that's it, guys. That is the GoPro mounted to the helmet. So when I'm going down the road, this is what she looks like. You can see it's nice and tight. Let me put my hand back here so you can see it's nice and tight up to the helmet. So it's not like hanging way out here. Some people also, they'll mount them sort of in this area on the side of the helmet. I never really was a fan of that because it, it sort of looks like you're sitting halfway off the handlebars. I like the shot to be right down the center. And that's what I get with this mounted like that. One other thing I wanna show you guys, because the minute you look up Moto Vlogging, which is not really what I do, I really do how-to videos, but that term, Moto Vlogging, it's all over YouTube and it seems like it applies to anybody who puts a GoPro on their helmet, is this little guy right here. It's called the Purple Panda. It is a microphone that plugs into your media mod. This is one thing I forgot to mention about the media mod, is in addition to being a microphone itself, uh, there is no attachment point for this style cable. It's like a headphone port, right? There's nowhere to plug this on a GoPro if you don't buy the media mod. It's kind of annoying. I feel like that's a port that they should have put on the GoPro itself. But if you decide that you wanna use one of these guys, which I purchased and I used, actually, if you go back to the first video on my channel, uh, that video is recorded with this GoPro and this guy right here. Let me pull the windsock off. This is called a lavalier mic. And basically this little piece clips onto your shirt right here. And then the other end plugs into the media mod of the GoPro. And that lets you capture higher quality audio from a distance. A lot of people use this Purple Panda microphone inside their helmet. So this cord, as you can see, is super long. Uh, the camera's mounted right to your helmet, so you really don't need a long cord at all, but you plug this end into your GoPro, and then you run this up through your helmet, and you put this little lavalier piece inside the cheek pad of your helmet. And essentially, this would give you better quality audio. Embarrassing as it is to say it, I have never tried it. I have always used the back microphone on that media mod. I'm not sure why I never tried it because I did use it for that studio video, but for one reason or another, I never did a ride along with it. Maybe at some point in the future, I will test this out and see how it works uh, for the moto vlogging application. But if audio quality is super important to you, which it should be, we all try to get the best audio that we can, um, but if you had a flip down visor and you put this little guy in the cheek pad, I think that that, that would give you some crystal clear audio. I kind of like having some of that background noise of the motorcycle, and from the feedback I've gotten from you guys, you like hearing the motorcycle too, so your mileage may vary, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Purple Panda microphone, go back to my first video, I'll put a link to it right up here if you want to hear what this sounds like versus that alone. So now you guys know what I'm using as far as the gear is concerned, but the next step in your journey is gonna to be to set your GoPro up so that it's ready to shoot. So in this next clip right here, I will bring the camera overhead and I'll show you all the settings that I use and so that you guys can literally, I'm gonna scroll the menu so you can just plug and play. Set yours up exactly how I've got mine set up and you will get the shots you see on this channel. Once you've got your GoPro in hand, it's now time to set the settings properly to capture the kind of things that you see on the channel here. So I'll just quickly show you the settings I use. It's not a ton in here. This little button down here says cinematic. If you click on that, this takes you into all your presets. Now don't worry about this. These all come from the factory. I didn't set any of these except for this one called cinematic. Just the one I happen to click on and this little pencil icon over here will take you into the settings. So let me just show you what I use. 
For resolution, I shoot in 4K, 24 frames a second. That lets, 24 frames a second lets the most light in. That's why I like that. And obviously 4K, YouTube loves optimized videos. So you gotta get that 4K resolution. Lens, I use wide, all right? There is a wider one. I think they call it super view. Yep, they call it super view. I don't use it because it looks too much like a fish eye and I hate it. It doesn't look natural, so I never use it. Hyper smooth. I put this one on high. The reason I use high, because as you can see, there is a hyper smooth boost and you get maximum stabilization with tight cropping. I don't want that tight cropping. It does just fine, even mounted to the frame of a hardtail chopper when it's set to high. So that's good enough for me. All right, scheduled capture, don't worry about that. Duration, make sure this is set to no limit. You don't want your GoPro turning off after five minutes midway through your ride. Hindsight, don't worry about that. Timer is off and zoom is 1.0. Now we're getting to the ProTune settings. Bit rate, this is the quality of the data you're capturing. I always leave this on high. No reason to capture anything but the best, am I right? Shutter speed, so your shutter speed typically... I know we talked about 24 frames a second. If this was a photography situation, you would set this to twice that. So you'd set it to one over 48. But when you're riding, the shot changes so much as far as the light. So you don't want to manually set your shutter speed for this. I leave this on auto. EV composition has to do with the brightness. If it was a really bright day, you could bump that down. But most of the time, I leave that set to zero. White balance, I put this on auto. Don't worry about that either. Again, for the same reason, your shot is changing constantly when you're doing this moto vlog, if you will, stuff. So we leave that on auto. ISO minimum, this has to do with brightness as well. Always leave your minimum set to 100. That'll give you the, the clearest shot. ISO maximum, I put it on 1600. And basically ISO maximum is just how far you want that ISO level to come up to compensate for how dark it is. Most of the shooting I do is during the day, so I don't need to go above 1600. Sharpness I put on medium. Uh, this is a good setting for me. I believe it's got high and low. I never felt the need. You can always sharpen the image in your editing program. So for me, I just leave the sharpness on medium. Color, I do natural. I do not do any color grading. I've had a couple people ask me this. Do I color grade my footage to get the results that I get in my studio shots or my ride along shots? I don't color grade any of it. I leave the color on natural. However, if you wanted it to be a little more vivid, you could do vibrant. This would be equivalent to uh, Instagram saturation, right? So if you want to have more colorful shots, you could switch that to vibrant, but I leave it on natural. Raw audio, don't worry about that. Wind, I put on auto because when you're riding, obviously there's a ton of wind noise, you wanna cut that down. And then last but not least, we've got media mod. So what this is, is whether you wanna use the back microphone here or the front microphone. So I leave it on the back because I'm talking into the back of the GoPro as I'm riding. And then here you've got your shortcuts, and I'll show you what these are. This is just the four things that show up here on the quick menu. So I've got my stabilization at the top right. Down here, I've got the media mod. So at a quick press of a button without going into the settings, I could switch which microphone I'm using. Over here, I've got the shutter speed. In case I wanted to do a, you know, talking to the GoPro shot, I could manually set the shutter speed from here. And then last but not least, I've got the... I could switch to super view, to wide, to linear. I can switch the lens right from the shortcut screen. And that's it, guys. Set your GoPro up just like this, and you'll get the same results that you see on my channel. If you want to see what this looks like when you put it all together, check out this video right here where I show you how to ride a foot clutch jockey shift motorcycle. Hands down, the most popular video on my channel. Filmed it with this GoPro, with these settings, with that media mod. Everything you saw discussed in this video is shown in that video. Now, before you guys go anywhere, if some of you guys are interested in this shot you're seeing right here, my in-studio setup, how I make this part of the video, leave a comment down below and let me know. If I see 20 or more comments about seeing how I set up the studio, I'd be happy to shoot this kind of video for you and give you the full walkthrough of all the gear that goes into that. In the meantime, ride safe, and I will catch you guys next week.